indeed. <laughs> so, uh, aside from that, uh, people, if you want to ask a question, raise your hand, and that, and that way it's much more... Uh, like a school. Yes. Um, Is it uni? Do more this uh, Maric's next play? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I do intend to do more uh, Maric playing uh, Batman and Masquerade Bloodlines. <laughs> it's one of those things that I, I always create these little side projects that I love, but then I, I, I realize I feel guilty and I'm like, I should be making the, the Yu Gi Oh! The Abridged series. And then I look at that and I'm like, I can't think of anything to write. <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to do, I, I kind of want to, I just want to be able to schedule everything, but it's difficult because it's something you're supposed to do for fun. And when yeah. you start to treat it like work, you stop wanting to do it as much, you know, I don't know. Uh, but I, I would love to do more of my place bloodlines, and I have some very specific plans because in the next two parts that I've filmed, because I've actually shot uh, footage for the uh, next se sequence of my place bloodlines, uh, he kills a prostitute. <laughs> it's just gonna be, I, I think it's going to become like a running gag throughout the entire game. Every so often he's just going to go and be like, I didn't do it! <laughs> famous sequence in uh, the, in my opinion, video game history because it's, it's just, it's one of the first sequences in the video game where I, I genuinely felt like I was going to die, like in real life, I, I feared for my safety and like, <laughs> uh, sitting there playing the computer, I wanted to turn the game off and I hadn't felt that way since playing the original Silent Hill, mm. and, uh, which I'm a huge fan of, I'm not really yeah. Silent Hill. Um, it's scarier really, isn't it? It's I'm like, sorry? It's because nothing is scarier, it gets to the point where, I've just done that myself, and you keep thinking, holy fucking shit, so, oh, nothing. <laughs> it's very psychological, uh, and, and, and there's like one sequence uh, where Marek's like, he's going to be playing it, uh, where he, he goes into like the, uh, the kitchen or whatever, and the whole, like the stove starts ex like exploding fireballs, and uh, frying pan stuff flying at you, and uh, it's attacking you. But basically the house is trying to kill you, and Marek's like, no, okay, I admit it, I'm gay! <laughs> for this to sound like a where's the new episode, but um, <laughs> when, when, when are we likely to see your Evangelion parody? Oh, yes, exactly, yes, that's a very good question, it's a very, a very uh, important question because I promised to do a Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds one-shot and an Evangelion uh, one-shot as a result of uh, a lot of money that was raised uh, to help Japan, and, and, and I was very, very proud to be involved with that, uh, it was something that a lot of people got on board with. And uh, we raised a, a lot of money over a specific amount that people would yell if I were to mention what it was. <laughs> uh, but um, the Evangelion, uh, I am working on it right now. Uh, I, I conceived it kind of as a, uh, a tribute to, if you've ever seen it, C Lab 2021. Yeah. Uh, with 
the, basically the main character will be Gandalf, who is insane. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty accurate, really. But uh, it, 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 it's, in the, it's in the works. Unfortunately, right now I am focusing on making the Yu-Gi-Oh! 3D Bonds Beyond Time abridged. Mm -hmm. But then Evangelion, oh, definitely, definitely by the end of the year, is something I really want to, to work Because the 5Ds one I was very proud of. Have you guys seen the 5Ds one shot that I made? Yeah! yeah. yeah. I don't want it to be like, well, you guys donated, okay, I'm going to throw something out there. And you deserve better than that, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely put my all into that. Uh, but yeah, where is a new episode? I'll answer that one just so nobody else has to ask it. I, am, I actually have the next three episodes written, uh, and I have all of the audio recorded for episode 54. I just haven't gotten around to finishing editing it because I've been busy trying to move to America, which, which is a very tedious and stressful process. And I, I don't mean to make excuses, but that is my excuse. <laughs> um, and uh, you will be seeing it before the end of the year, definitely. They, in my, if I can do one thing, I will get those, those guys out of the Noah saga by the end of the year. That's, that's my attempt. Uh, over, where are the back over there? Um, like when you first started doing it, well, you know you can change your voice like lots of times. I have no idea what you're talking about. Did you could you just do that, or did you have to practice a lot? Yeah. Well, I used to do a lot of like. Uh, I used to role play, I used to role play with my friends at school. Not quite along the lines of what I was I was known as the guy. We would play Call of Cthulhu. And uh, I was the guy who, like, if we were like on a quest to destroy some monster, I'd be the guy trying to seduce a girl in a bar somewhere. <laughs> have you heard that? Have you heard that like audio of Dungeons and Dragons where the guy's like, Where are there any girls there? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was me, pretty much. Not not literally, but that was me. Uh, and I, I would always try and do a different character with the goofy voice and everything. So. And also, we used to sometimes like set up the, the video camera, and it, it was like the early 90s and or late 80s, so early 90s. So the video cameras was like this big. It was a huge thing. We set it up in front of the TV, and we mute the audio, and we we play episodes of Babylon 5, and we just talk over them. <laughs> we had never seen Babylon 5. We had no idea what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> that was essentially my first abridged series. Was uh, Babylon 5 abridged? You might call it. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but it was a lot of fun, and I was always the guy, the other guys kept straight faces the whole time, but I was the guy who was cracking up, and I was like, I love doing this, and I would come to school, and I would, <laughs> in during class, I would turn them, and I would quote the show at them that we'd made, so I was kind of like, in your face, <laughs> I start pestering them saying, you should do your line, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I loved doing that, and then I was, I used to make fun of my teachers at school a lot, and I would do impressions of them. And that was one of the things that I kind of got by with as a defense mechanism when people would try and bully me. It was like, I can also make fun of other people. You know, it was one of those things. Um, so basically, I had it sort of ingrained in me that I could do impressions and voices and stuff. Uh, I was a huge fan of shows like Beavis and Butthead, which had Mike Judge uh, doing pretty much every single male character on the show. And I, I had great respect for that. I was like, I'd love to be in a position like that, where you know nobody even realizes that it's you, but you're everybody in that TV show. And, and I saw Yu-Gi-Oh at one point, and I was like, I could kind of do Twisted's voice. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I just said, you know, I should write something based around the fact that I, I really like this show, and I really like the characters, and I really like to make fun of things. So <laughs> that's how the magic happened. But yeah, I, I used to do 